Okay, here we go. Episode number 40. And this is a special one. Um, I've gone all out and I've messaged someone on Instagram to uh, see if I can get a sneaky show of them during the lockdown. And this man happened to have some time. Uh, and that is Mr. David Norris. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Thank you. Welcome. And thanks for coming on. Um, I think I'm going to have some jealous friends back in the UK, Cornwall, Devon area, obviously Argyle legends. So um, I'm sure they're going to be listening to this one. But uh, do you want to just give yourself a little bit of an introduction to who you are? For those yeah, so, yeah, sure. So my name's David Norris. Um, I'm a former professional footballer. Um, I played at Bolton, uh, Plymouth, Ipswich, Portsmouth, Leeds and Blackpool. Uh, and I'm still playing now semi-professionally. Um, I also have two small functional gyms um, and I'm a personal trainer. Yeah, so I, you've got uh, CrossFit UF, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So is that where you do most of your training out of your own training and stuff? Yeah, that's where I do most of my own stuff. Yeah. The, um, what happened was, as I was coming towards the end of my football, I wanted to set up um, a gym. Uh, and um, I had a friend uh, who was, uh, who'd been gyms, run gyms himself. And so I got involved with him. I wanted to make it just strength conditioning. I didn't know too much about CrossFit at the time. He was very CrossFit. So, uh, we went affiliated and so we could cover a bit of both and, and that's why that one's that one and I have another one uh, across towards Leeds which is just a small functional gym uh, covers the same sort of training but it's not CrossFit. Yeah okay cool so what I want to do mate is um, kind of just go through two different areas maybe just to begin with just go from you know you as a professional because I think it's really kind of interesting your lifestyle and your type of training then how you transitioned out of that and then obviously you're transitioning into like the fitness world as well working as a personal trainer as a coach that type of stuff um so do you want to just give a little bit of an insight into you know um your life as a professional footballer in particular you know your fitness levels your daily lives nutrition sleep all of that stuff yeah sure so to be honest throughout my whole career it was it, i felt like it was a bit of trial and error um, you know, there was always different things coming out every few years of, of the best way to do this uh, and, and the best way to do that. And I was always massively into my fitness. Um, I would say technically I was never the best player, but I was always going to make sure that I was the fittest and, and, and you know, and strong and, and would play lots of games um, and be available. So I was banging into my fitness all the way through. Um, and then I start, it started well because I went to Bolton as my first professional club under Sam Allardyce, who was really into any sort of small percentage he could get. So when it comes to fitness, nutrition, uh, he was bang on it. And that gave me a little insight into it. And then I, I started to really like enjoy it. And, you know, I, I kept on top of it, you know, then throughout my whole career. How much did, um, I guess this is going on a little bit of a tangent, but obviously like the basic fitness levels, how much uh, emphasis did you have to place on like the nutrition side of it? Uh, quite a lot. When I was younger, I, I didn't really... To be honest, I, I wasn't too fussed. You think you can, you know, eat, drink everything and still get away with it. I think it affects you more as you get older. But when I was younger, we would used to get um, weighed and body fat tested um, reasonably regularly. So that was the only pressure you really had. Other than that, you almost left your own devices, especially earlier on. Um, and so I liked my food. And so I would, uh, I would probably um, try and out train, you know, a not so great diet early on. Yeah. Um, and then as I got more and more uh, into it and, and a bit more aware and a bit more, you know, what, how much I needed to be uh, on top of my game and, and, and at them top levels, then I started to take a bit more care about it. I just wonder, because um, I know that you, you do a bit of training with boxers and that type of stuff as well. And I had Brad Pauls on, who's a <laughs> professional boxer on one of my shows not long ago. And he talked about this mindset that he's got, obviously that, you know, that training camp 12 week mindset leading up to a fight where he's, you know, completely dedicated to the cause. Um, but he said, what really makes a great fighter is the one who can kind of control themselves outside of training camps as well. And he brought, out, brought up examples like, you know, Ricky Hatton and that type of stuff. How, how is that kind of the same in, in the football respect? Uh, it, 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 does, it has, you know, it cross paths. Um, it, it, there is some similarities. Uh, to when I was first, um, when I was at Plymouth, to be fair, and we would finish the season, I would take four weeks and just do nothing next to nothing eat and drink I could be you know three quarters of a stone heavier in yeah. three or four weeks and then I would just smash it starting you know training again uh, and then the last two weeks I might as well have been back into training anyway because I'd just be trying to chase what I put on uh, to get back to that level so it was similar for me as I got older I had to change that because it was getting harder and harder to get to, yeah, to yeah. that level but 
yeah, that, 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 that was the same. It was um, uh, relax, go crazy for a bit and then, and then start worrying about it again. So as, obviously you're still playing semi-professional now. Um, is, have you kind of had to dial stuff like that in then in terms of you know, being a little bit more consistent over a longer period? What sort of stuff have you had to change since going semi-pro? So I think because of the experience of what I do now and, um, and I have a bit more of an idea, I know how to manage my body. I, I've developed, you know, my, my calories in, my calories out, my training. Even my training, when I was um, a professional, I would train and train. I'd go into the gym nearly every day as well as the football training. And if ever I felt tired, I would never question that it was because I was tired. I'd question I weren't fit enough. So I'd probably, I was probably overtraining. Where now I've got much more control of my diet and my training. So now I know I can, a rest is as good as, you know, as, as training again. So I've got, a, I feel like I've got a good balance of managing that nutrition side where I know I can look at a meal and go, right, there's probably about a thousand calories in that. Bit more, uh, 50 grams of protein, right? Okay, so if I have that, I know I can have that. If I do this, I know I need to dial back there. And so I've just got a bit more of a, an overall understanding and, and balance about it all, probably just through experience. Yeah, and I guess that, that comes in really handy when you're working with you know, your clients as well. And it, it's kind of good that you've got those expertise. And I spoke about this before. Like I played you know, football in the UK. When I came out here, it was more kind of CrossFit. And same as you, like always out training the poor diet. I never really thought about what I ate and you know as it as time went on I'm not as active you know I'm not competing in CrossFit or anything like that anymore so I have to pay loads more attention to the food but again it's just like you said there it's having the I guess you built up the knowledge over time to eyeball food and go right this is what it means and and kind of gauge your balance through that yeah absolutely yeah and that is one thing I'll try and um I'll, I'll try and implement with the people I work with whether it be even even the boxers and the footballers um you know especially the boxers they've got to make weight yet if they don't eat, some of them won't even know how many calories are coming in and out. So, you know, that's the, almost the, the basis of what it's all got to be built on. So then they can get into a deficit to make weight as well as then the other stuff they do. And also with them, that I enjoy working with the boxers because it's so varied. They've, they've got to be strong, but they can't put on weight with a the muscle. They've got to be powerful. Um, they're training two, three times a day in different modalities. So, uh, you know, they've got to be able to recover, but they've got to be short, sharp bursts. So the whole thing with them is, is, is really interesting and that's why I like working with them. Um, but yeah, I think once, once they know, once you know what, what is what and what's coming in and you can control everything a lot more, um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, you know, take that forward and, and find that balance. And, and the same with, you know, the general po uh, public that I work with. I just, I'm trying to get them for the longevity of it, get, get away from all these short term fads and diets and, you know, not knowing, you know, what, what's working for them and, and just trying to get them to a balance where you can have, you know, there is no bad foods. You can have this, but just know what, that if you do have this day, then the next day you tone it down a bit. Yeah, exactly. Everything has got to be aligned with the goal. And it's, it's almost just, you know, we're all kind of preaching the same thing. It's almost just uh, getting people to realize and recognize where they're currently at. And it's probably like frightfully obvious where they're going wrong. And it just takes a I guess taking responsibility for what you're doing and then just understanding that and how you can change that. Do you, do you find that you work with, I know you've just mentioned both there. Do you find that you work with more elite or more general population or is it kind of like a mixture? Yeah, it's a mixture. Um, and you know, cause sometimes when I'm trying to promote what I do do and they say, you know, you've got to find your market. So which type almost down to the, the, the age group, the sex, and I still haven't found that because yeah. of a lot of the one-to-one -one stuff I do can vary from, you know, young guys to older guys, to women, to people who want to be, you know, uh, athletes, to people who just want to lose a bit of weight. As then, and then I've got the professional athletes. So at the minute, I'm still working with such a broad range of different types of people, which is great for me because of, I'm still early doors in this game and I'm still learning. I'm still constantly reading and trying to get up on things. And, you know, I feel like, like I might be, what I have an experience I probably don't have in, 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 the, in the knowledge from, you know, uh, textbooks. So uh, I'm really enjoying working with all these types of people. Uh, and I think that's what's really helping me. Yeah, I think you've nailed it there in terms of just trying to dial in your niche, right? Like I've, I've been personal trainer coach for like 12, 13 years, and I'm still not sure of where, who I like to work <laughs> with. There'll be someone coming in with like injuries. And I'm like, oh, you know, I've got a bit of injury experience or there's someone who wants to go a little bit more kind of like professional and, yeah, I'm sure you'll, you'll work that yeah. one out. Um, yeah. how, how did you find your kind of transition into the fitness industry then? Like, 
from coming out of the, the pro game? Uh, it was it was what I was going to be. It was what I was interested in. I mean, you get to 30, 31 up as a footballer and you, you know that it's going to be only a few more years if that. Um, and to me, fair, I got that to that age and was like, what the hell am I going to do next? Uh, what, what do I want to do? You know, I, I'm not really feeling the coaching and uh, management side of things. Um, but then I was into my fitness as a player. I was always interested in that. And so it was just, well, where can I take that? Do I work at a club and try and get into, a, you know, the strength and conditioning side of that? Um, do I set up a gym? Do I just be a PT? Uh, but I knew that was the sort of, the, you know, the area that I wanted to go in. Um, and that was what I started to look into. And the transition was good because I still, when I set up but the, the gym in Bolton, I was still playing at Blackpool. So I could just drop in and out um, almost. And then when I finished, could go straight into it. Because if that's another thing, when you finish football, there is no phase out. It's stop dead. You're not coming to training next week. Like you're, yeah, you, wow. you're done. And the, the, so, so that can be difficult to, you know, even I struggled a little bit mentally to deal with all of that um, over the, the following year from retirement. But having the gyms was nice because it kept me busy. I could just go from one thing straight into another that I was interested in and, you know, just make that transition a little easier. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And I guess from obviously, because you've already highlighted that you work with kind of, you know, quite a varied clientele, just for you personally, and, and whether you've got any training methodologies for yourself, like strength training, you know, intervals, that type of stuff. Do you have kind of like a foundation that you like to work off? Obviously not too specific, but is there types of things that you like to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do cover a bit of everything. I like to get I like to get resistance training in there. Um, I like to, 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 to encourage them to, you know, build some muscle tone, which will obviously burn more fat when they're doing nothing um, and encourage them to, you know, to get away from that. Sometimes, especially with the women, the myth of, well, I don't want to get big. As soon as you stick a barbell or, yeah, yeah. you know, something in front of uh, uh, some of the women, they're a bit like, well, I don't want to be doing weights. I don't want to get big. And you have to encourage that, you know, convince them, look, this is never going to happen. You're not going to be doing this five times a week. Yeah. Um, so I do like to get some resistance training in. Um, and then I just try and mix it up. I try and keep it so I can cover what I need to cover, um, you know, what I want to train, full body, but, but, but keeping it fun and keeping them interested so it's not the same thing every week, but I'm still covering the same movements uh, and the same muscle groups. Um, and then when it comes to, uh, say, the, the footballers, it'll be, the footballers are hard work because of, they're, they're in and out. They're not, you can't program for them because they can you do me a session three weeks later? Can you do me another session? Um, so I tend to just do a cover a bit of everything with them, especially off season. They'll be here, there and everywhere with their holidays and visiting people. So I'll do a session that covers a bit of everything. We'll do some a warm up, some plyometrics, some power, uh, strength and then conditioning. Um, and just, and they cover a bit of everything and in their head, that's them checked off right after my session. Uh, and then when it comes to the boxers, Again, they're training a lot, so I tend to work with them two days a week. Um, and so I do something uh, called a, um, a condensed conjugate me method. Uh, Phil DeRue, a guy and an MMA trainer in America, um, and I f find that works for me. Um, and that's just trying to cover a bit of everything again over you know the two days of the week. So you'll do a, a strength lower body, a power upper body with a bit of conditioning, and then you'll swap that over on the second day. And I find that's working because of, with them guys, you have to work around their training more so as well. So they might say, well, I'm sparring tomorrow. So then you've almost got to change what you're yeah. doing so they can spar. And so you can't almost stick to a rigid plan with them. So I find that, that that plan works best for me with them. Yeah, that's awesome. And how are you finding, obviously now the current times, like with, like I just, like I mentioned to you before, like in, in the UAE in Dubai, we're on lockdown. So we're not allowed out at all. Obviously you got a little bit more flexibility where you are in terms of being able to get out and run and stuff. What are you finding, I guess, two questions. What are you finding your clients are struggling with, uh, you know, not having the freedom to go to a gym and lift the barbell and that type of stuff, and then kind of your own training as well? Yeah, uh, personally, um, it's not been too bad because of, obviously, we had a little bit of a heads up what was going to happen here. And so I pretty much brought half the gym back to the house with me to make <laughs> sure that, I, you know, that I was going to be covered. But to be honest, personally, I need that, that mental release. You know, I, I enjoy the training. So it, it, it's great for me to help me through these times. And I think that's one thing I'm finding with clients and the people I train is, is it's more the mental side of things that they're struggling a little bit with because of, then they're not having the gym. Then they're starting to eat a bit more, drink a bit more. They're, ang they're anxious about what's happening. Um, then they're losing motivation to train. So 
I'm finding I'm just trying to keep them right mentally, help them speak to them, and then just change the, the, the goals for the short term. Let's ride this out. If we can go, if we can maintain where we're at at the end of, other end of this, then, then brilliant. Happy days. Don't put too much pressure on yourselves to keep improving, to try and hit a goal. Let's just realise where we're at, where we're at physically, mentally, and, and adjust the goals slightly, and, and, and we can still get some good work done. Yeah, I, I find that as well. And I, always, I almost feel like there's been this shift of like, the, obviously one of the biggest barriers and excuses that people have is not having enough time to exercise. And we've kind of gone full shift the other side of it now. And you go, just want that balance in the middle. Uh, I yeah. don't know, what do you think is better, having too much time or not enough time? I know it's hard to say because you haven't got the same facilities, but... Yeah, well, I, I would have before. Time is one thing that, you know, it seems to, you know, hold a lot of people back. But... Um, They've got all the people seem to have all the time now and, and, and still some are finding it quite hard to, you know, to get motivated for it. Uh, I think that the, the equipment side of things is hard and obviously it's, it's quite an anxious time for a lot of people, stressful time with work and, and finances. Um, but yeah, I think normally it would be at times a big, a big constraint for a lot of people. So I try and focus on even the stuff, a lot of stuff they can do away from the gym with their nutrition and, and their day to day, you know, burning calories. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not it's not as it's not been as easy as you thought it would have been with with that time. You know, almost no excuse being taken out of it. It's still quite hard to to keep people on it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'll tag you in uh, uh, in this post as well in the podcast. But you've been putting out a lot of like body weight stuff and a lot of good exercises, right, on your um, on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started to just. Um, do a little bit to, to keep myself active and it was a route that I wanted to originally go down was to do a little bit more online but because of um, I was 100 mile an hour I never really got the chance and this has actually given me a chance to you know film some content and put stuff out there and it's been great I've had some like great it's, it's really nice the feedback you get and you know people are trying the workouts tagging me in the workouts and then just the messages I'm getting just saying oh really thanks for that you know it's helping me get through you know so it's been really nice and uh, it, it, it's something that I had been wanting to, to do a bit more of. Have you found like the, have you found the environment, the fitness industry has reacted to this situation? Do you think it's generally been like a positive thing or do you think, um, you know, that it's a little bit negative? There's a bit of struggling out there that, that people can see. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it seems it, it's positive in that there's, there's a lot more out there. I mean, there's the, the people are putting a lot more out there, for, you know, free stuff as well for people to look at a lot. But then the, at the same time, I've seen that, you know, some, not all of that's good. Uh, yeah. You know, I've seen some crazy variations of exercises, some ordering on dangerous and, uh, you know, some, some, some crazy advice as well um, from people, you know, you know, make more, more influencers or people not in that, in the game. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, I'm seeing a lot more people trying to move, you know, online and, and offering people to help people and, and a lot more people doing, being more active. So I'd say overall, it's been a bit, been a bit more of a positive thing than the negative. Yeah, like you highlighted, obviously, you're, you, you're 100 miles an hour before, so you've had the chance to kind of take a step back and have a look about what you really want to do. And I guess I'm the same, you know, like a lot of my business is online, but I, I coach in a CrossFit gym as well. And obviously not having the, um, the ability to go and coach in the gym, it's kind of looking at my model and, and how it affects. And, you know, I'm back doing live classes on, on like uh, Facebook and things like that. And it's, yeah. it's not a bit... If you told me this six months ago, I'd have been like, nah, no chance. I'm, I'm in the gym, I'm PT and I'm doing that type of stuff. So it's kind of been a good reality check and I'm enjoying it actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same because I found as well that I was coming to a point where there was, there's only so many one-to-ones you can fit in a day and so many classes you can take. And then I'm almost like, well, what, there's nothing else I, I was really doing. So having this online and looking into this online stuff and doing a bit more that way is definitely something when it goes back to normal that I will continue with and maybe just get, make myself a, a bit more time, you know, the other end. So I can continue to do that. Yeah. Do you find like the online side of it is more about the accountability more than anything, right? Having someone who's there to support guide you and just give you a kick up the ass when you need it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm finding that with a couple that I've taken on this week, I'm getting messages, you know, later on in the day where, I'm, I'm asking them to hit certain steps or, or to, you know, stay on in, within certain calorie ranges. And they're telling me I've just been for a run. I would have just normally sat on their ass, but they're scared to then message me, send me over their picture of their steps without it almost being close to the target. Yeah, yeah. So you can see, you know, it gives them the accountability and, and, and it's not a bad thing if it means rather than just sitting there, they, they get out for a walk or they go out for a, a jog 
or you know they don't go and scoff their faces in the you know late at night then that that's definitely i think the biggest thing is is the accountability people want you know someone to answer to otherwise it, they find it very hard to self-motivate yeah that's cool i want to um just bring it back round to just talking about when you were kind of coming out of the professional game obviously still playing uh, a good mate of mine sam massive plymouth argyle fan so i told him that you were going to come on and i asked for a question he said um he just wanted to know about the final years playing as a pro did you actually feel your body slowing down and um you know, what things did you put in place? We kind of covered this a little bit anyway, but what things did you put in place? Did you start yoga? You know, nutrition went up another level, that type of stuff. Yeah, to be fair, I'd say I looked, started looking at my nutrition uh, a bit more um, because of it was, I, I wasn't really finding it much harder. Um, my fitness was always my game. So I knew if I just trained and, and kept hitting the same, because we, we were being monitored with, you know, for our, our distance covered, our sprint distances, there's never been a drop off in mine. And even now when I'm still playing, we still monitor that. And mine now is still very similar to when I was a pro. So I know I can keep myself fit. I've not really struggled. It's taken me a little longer to recover after games. I'm, you know, it might be normally the next day where sometimes I can be crawling on a Monday after a Saturday game still. <laughs> I've noticed it in that way. But I started to take care of my nutrition, definitely. Uh, I kept on top of my fitness. I always wanted to be the fittest player on the pitch if I could. Because then that just mentally even give me, gave me an edge. Um, but one thing I did definitely change is uh, as I hit 30, I had a knee injury and I'd never really done train my legs before. Other than when you were professional and especially when I was younger, it was more, they would write up a, a session on the board and all lads would go in and say, right, do three sets of these eight exercises and you're done. There was no specificity. It was just a, a generic session. Yeah. And so I'd never really trained. And in my head, I always did used to think, you know, naively, oh, look how much running I'm doing. My legs will be strong enough. Yeah. Um, and then I got this knee injury and I went to see the surgeon and he said, there's so much wear and tear in your knee. He said, you have to get your legs strong. He said, if you get your leg, if you don't get your legs strong, you're going to be done in a year. If you get your legs strong, you'll get another four. So I then went and batted my legs and core for that time. I was injured for four, six months and I come off that and thought, I wish I'd been doing it my, my whole career. Um, I felt squatting, so much better. Squatting, lunging. Yes, yeah, squatting, lunging, deadlifts, uh, all of that type of stuff. And I felt so much more solid and stronger. Um, and that was one thing I changed as I was getting older, I got stronger and that, I think that protected the joints and, and was able to, you know, keep me going longer. Yeah, that's so true. And, uh, I think a lot of people find that as when, when that injury can be the catalyst effect of, right, you need to do something about it. Now what you were doing previously was good, but it could be better. What's the, um, like you've got a good insight into this. What's the, like the strength and conditioning, uh, kind of game looking like in professional football, you know? as of now, over the last kind of five, 10 years, has it transitioned a lot? Yeah, I think so. From, from the reports and the feedback that I get, it, it definitely seems like it has. Um, it's a lot more specific to the individual player and their needs, um, and they'll get programmes. Uh, I still think it, it's not as you know, specific or as good as it could be, uh, but, it, but in the game, it, it, it becomes all about just winning and just playing the games and, so, and being available for games. And so... If you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, that gym side of things will, will, get, will get pushed to the side as long as you're almost recovering and then preparing for games. Um, and, and they don't want anything to, to go away from that, which sometimes, you know, they, they think in their heads the strength and the gym stuff will. So I think it's got a lot better, definitely, than it was, like I say, when I was even up to, towards the end, maybe just before when I got to Portsmouth, it was starting to get better. But it was just a generic stuff written up on the board. Players, go in, do your bits, unless you were doing your own thing. And, uh, and it was crazy, really. There was nothing more to it. Where now, uh, the players I train in the summer, they've, they've got their own programmes. They do try and do bits more in the year. Lots of more players are in the gyms throughout the season. That used to be, um, not frowned upon, but, you know, you'd get stick. If you, if, you adver- if you put something on social media years back and that you was in the gym, you'd get called a busy <laughs> Yeah. So, like, what you do, so, you know, it wasn't the thing to do. It was keep it on the quiet, get yourself in the gym, do your bits, get away. But now it's like everyone, everyone can, everyone does, everyone puts it up there, everyone lets everyone else know what they're doing. And so it's a positive thing because the people are in the gym, they're, they're, doing, they're doing the right stuff that they should be doing. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo is putting some hours in the gym, isn't he? So I guess he's a kind of good role model for that side of it. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, there's, there's a few out there. Uh, Gareth Bale, uh, you know, his trip transformation. Um, 
But when them players are start, when they're doing it, uh, and it's the same with the boxers, once the top guys are doing it and they're having their strength and conditioning guys and they're putting more in the gym, then it does have a knock-on effect and, and, and you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's, it's been really good to get kind of like an insight in even just towards the back end of your career and, you know, your transition into the fitness industry as well. And, you know, I wish you luck in the future and I'm sure you're going to dial in your niche as you go. Um, but it's been great to have you on anyway. Yeah, no, it's, it's been great, mate. Yeah, well, we'll have to do it again as well once I've, uh, once I've, I've got a little bit more, you know, further down the line in this fitness uh, yeah, game 100%. as well. But, but yeah, um, where, it's, can, uh, um, where can people find you? So uh, Instagram, uh, David Norris PT, um, the same on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, they're the two main ones uh, that, I, that I'm using at the minute. Um, and like I say, at the minute I'm putting out, you know, free workouts um, and, and, and content and, you know, advice. And, and I'm giving everyone the option, you know, to message me or if they need to ask any questions, you know, I'm, I'm here to help, especially during this time. Yeah, definitely. That's super useful. I'll make sure that I tag them in. But uh, thanks again for coming on, mate. No problem, mate. Thank you for having me.